الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful the master of the earth and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal, and the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow on the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu anna Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah I remind you and remind myself to be pious To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that you do To heed the warning and the calling of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Oh you believe be God conscious and die in no way except in the way of submission of Islam Oh you believe be God conscious fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow and fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى for He knows best what you do I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the blessings of this day, to forgive our sins, guide our steps, and keep us steadfast on his path. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today across many mosques of America, many Islamic centers from east to west, north to south, are reminding our community and reminding one another of our duty to participate effectively in the affairs of our nation. A big event is on the horizon less than three weeks, possibly two and a half weeks, where we're going to be held in testament for the future of our nation, for the soul of our country, for the well-being of the future generations and the communities across the board. It is a responsibility that becomes ever so pressing when the stakes are high, when the questions are big, and when the responsibility to put forth the vision that will carry America to be an ever greater, insha'Allah, nation is up to every one of us when we go out to vote. And so what may be deemed as a mere civic or a mere activity that everybody engages in for us is a religious obligation. For us is a must because we're asked to testify. For us, it's a must because it's part of the fulfillment of our covenant to seek the good and to do the best we can for our nation. And when the soul of this nation, a nation of immigrants, a nation of pluralism, a nation of diversity, a nation of standing principles that can be honored and should be honored at all times, we may come short in implementing them at times. But it doesn't take away the fact that we all believe in them and we all pledge allegiance and we all stand by those principles. Now what's even ever closer to us and more heartening to us even this time, we have just recently celebrated the hijrah of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hijri year that has come upon us 20 days later or before. It is an occasion in which our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came with principles that revolutionized human condition, that brought 
inside divine guidance from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring order to the life of man. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seeking a place in which he can implement the model that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed him upon. The principles of human brotherhood, of justice, of equality, of standing for that which is right and refuting that which is evil, for the freedoms and liberties that are endowed to us by our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala and are in our book, the book of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. What was he doing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He was seeking those who will support him on those principles. He knew that the condition of man in the land of Arabia, where the people around him were killing one another, were stealing from one another, were more loyal to the tribe than they are loyal to the principles of truth and justice. He looked around, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inspired by divine guidance from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which he would not give up any of his principles. He was offered wealth and he turned it away. He was offered rulership and he turned it away. He was offered money and power and he said, this matter is the matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By Allah, if they put the sun on my right and they put the moon on my left, I shall not leave this matter until I die trying or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it in fruition. And so he was. And what he was doing for those, for those who, who want to read the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not as dates or as birth times or as events, but rather as a history that is being made. And a mission that's being implemented by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would seek the people of justice. When he saw a group of people trying to implement an agreement and a treaty at a time when he was even before he was a prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In Hilf al-Fudul, he recognized the value of human dignity. He recognized the reason why people are surrounding themselves for the cause of justice and so he signed on to it and he was only 20 years old sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he lived a life with the same principles when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed him with the enlightenment of the divine guidance he saw the embodiment of the great guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into a life mission and so he sought the people of Medina and he sought the people of Yathrib and he sought the people of Ta'if and he sought every tribe in Arabia and when he recognized he can no longer continue his mission in, Me in Mecca, which is his place of birth, and which was the most beloved place of his, for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like he used to say, Wallahi innaki la ahabbu al-ardi li, walaw anna ahlaki akhrajuni ma kharajt. But then he recognized that in the land of Yatrib he can implement the mission he is about to do. What did he do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And why the linkage with the hijrah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because the first thing he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he recognized that this is the place to implement the principles and the divine guidance that every one of us today, my dear brothers and sisters, recite in the book of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we read, لا إكراها في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتائد القربة we read this. What did he do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The first thing he did in Medina, he established a human constitution, a treaty for all of us students of history. We all hear, oh, the oldest constitution ever brought in human civilization in a true form. A contract between people for them to agree on principles by which they all implement and live by. We go back as far as proud Americans, 1776, when the U.S. Constitution was established. Or maybe we go a few years later when we talk about the French Constitution between 1789 and 1791. Lo and behold, my dear brothers and sisters, look in your books, look in your history. 627 the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam writes down what's called wathiqatul madina or sahifatul madina or some even called it the dustur the constitution of madina in it sallallahu alaihi wasallam he lays out the principles of diversity and pluralism he says 
that the people that constitute the citizens, the, the citizenry of the area where he was ruling, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, including the Muslims and the Jews and those who did not believe, the animists or otherwise, and later even Christians. He says that they are part of us and we're part of them, that there is a common defense, that there is social justice that must take care of everybody, that there is a freedom of religion that is not to be tampered with nor touched. In fact, his great student Umar radiallahu anhu, the man who learned to use the occasion of hijra to be the beginning of the Islamic history. My dear brothers and sisters, think about this. When Umar radiallahu anhu, and who does not know Umar radiallahu anhu? He was the epitome of the just ruler. He was a man whose years of rulership were amazing. He used to sleep under the tree because he's never feared that anybody would kill him. Because Adil Tafa Amin Tafa Nimtaya Umar. Umar, when his Prince, when, when, when his principals, when his regional directors, leaders come to visit him in Medina, there was one time when Al-Ahnaf ibn Qais, he was coming with a group from Iraq and he was the leader of Iraq. He came to meet Umar, he came to his house thinking that he will find him amongst his troops and amongst his, you know, loyalties. He couldn't find Umar. They told him, go find Umar in an area in Medina which was considered one of the lowest neighborhoods in Medina. He said, what is Umar doing over there? So he goes to meet with Umar. He finds Umar rolling up his, the sleeves of his shirt and the sleeves of his pants and using the tar to put it on the camels that have been affected at that time because of the illnesses and the problems that were taking place in Medina. They were the Ibal al-Sadaqa. They were the Ibal, the, the camels that are used to feed the poor and to be given as charity. And so he would come to him and he say, Oh Umar, why wouldn't you let any one of your servants do that which you are doing right now? He would turn to him and he says, Wallahi ya ahnaf, wa ayyu a'abadun minni wa mink, fa mal abdu illa man wulli ya amra al-nas, fa qama biha, wa adda al-amana. He tells him, Oh ahnaf, who is more a servant of the people than you and me? A servant is somebody who is entrusted with the responsibility to serve others and he fulfills it to the best. That's the Umar that learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was his student. And he, when he had the command to decide on the future of nothing but Jerusalem, Elia, the part of Palestine, which the Muslims took over when he was given the responsibility to decide on the affairs of others and he was the ruler of the Muslims and he had his might and his power he brought about what's called Al-Uhd al umariyah he learned from his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the author of the first constitution Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a document we can be proud of relate to take ownership of and stand by when we learn how to be faithful American citizens honoring our constitution and standing by its tenets and being able to stand and say that Congress shall make no law that would support the institution of religion or prohibit its existence that we can stand and say that people are endowed by these are self-evident truths and that people are endowed by their creator, by liberty and the right to pursuit of happiness and justice. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These are not empty words, my dear brothers and sisters. These are not things that we say just because we carry a blue passport. Nor is it because we get social security or we get the extra benefits that we have from the human endeavor we call America. This is something we do because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something we do because we honor the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a responsibility we take on very seriously. 
because the students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the likes of Umar, Khalid ibn al-Walid, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Amr ibn al-As, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, they were all the signatories on the same agreement that gave the Christians the right not only to worship, but not to have their churches abandoned, nor taking over, even their crosses must be protected because that's the way they chose to practice their faith. And when Umar was asked to pray in Kanisatul Qiyamah, the Holy Sepulchre, he decided not to do that because he thought maybe a Muslim will come and think that this is a property of Muslims and they will take it over. And he went across the street and he established Masjid Umar ibn al-Khattab that stands today as a testament of the honor that we bring forth to understanding the human relations. My dear brothers and sisters, today we talk about elections. Today we remember Hijra, but today we are honoring the very faith we believe, the very important component that makes us who we are as contributing American citizens who believe in the social contract we have with our fellow Americans and who are not only content with being those who honor that which is required of them because that is part and parcel of our deen. We are asked to be true to any covenant we agree to. And before I go further, the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ established to no doubt to anybody's mind that the land in which you live the land in which you can cultivate your mission, your understanding, your principles, what you live by, is the land that you call home. Our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he adopted Medina as his home, like many of us did. I came when I was 15, 30 some years ago. And to me, when I chose to be a U.S. citizen, I chose to be part and parcel of this human experiment called America. I did it with full consciousness. The same conviction I have when I say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. You know, in Islam, the calling of one's conviction of faith starts by negating that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You negate, then you give this yourself the right to choose to say, there is no God worthy of worship, no deity worthy of worship, except, and then you affirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when we choose to be citizens, we choose to be signatories and supporters of a covenant between us and between our people here in America. وَأَوْفُوا بِالْعَهْدِ إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ كَانَ مَسْؤُولًا And then it doesn't stop there, my dear brothers and sisters. Because yes, we want to honor our word. Yes, we want to live by that which is agreed upon for all communities. Any community that comes to America, they are given the right to have their freedom of religion. And with that, my dear brothers and sisters, let's not have any qualms about it. Let's not feel excluded. Let's not feel like we're victims. We're practicing our deen, alhamdulillah. The few ignorance that want to picture Islam as a source of terror and the, the source of evil, are minorities that must be worked with. And we can overcome that. The Islamophobia that's rampant is only a passing phenomenon. It shall not phase us. It shall not make us worry. If we're able to establish our Islam, live by the tenets of our deen, call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom and the good example, then this is a land of Islam. This is a land where Islam is to be cultivated and prospered like everything else, every other religion here. And so when we talk about ahad or when we talk about the responsibility towards others, we're talking about a fulfillment of the very faith that defines us. And so then it doesn't stop at the al-ahad wal-mufuna bi-ahadihim idha ahadu. But rather it is more than that. Because when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took care of the affairs of Medina, he didn't stay there. He recognized that wherever there is a land without freedom, wherever, wherever there is a restriction on the rights of others to practice freely and in the rights of others to live with dignity and where human suffering still exists, then he has a mission and a responsibility, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
to take care of. And so it became the mission of those who believed in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and took it to the world at large. Even when he was making treaties with others, he was sending messengers to the rest of the world. He recognized that this good is beyond the words of a treaty, but rather it's about the beautiful meanings, the divine guidance that is embodied in the very principles that we live by. The Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just our Lord. He is the Lord of the universe. He is the Lord of all of humanity. And the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just meant for Ahmad and Muhammad. It is meant for everybody who lives and breathes on this earth. And so we take our responsibility even more serious. We are an ummah to shahada. فَهِيَ عَهْدٌ وَشَهَادَةٌ وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا You have been given a responsibility. The guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come upon you. You were given a mission that you must never rest until you make sure that it comes to its fruition. What is that mission we talked about? The righteousness. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَ بَنِي آدَمْ the principles of justice, of righteousness, enjoining the good, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ That's a mission that requires from us to do more. If people are content just to go to vote, then we're not content until everybody is given the chance and the right to vote. If people are content that we have two parties that decide our future, then we must not be content until the issues are discussed and the right perspectives are presented and the morals and the principles of our nation are exhibited in the ideas and in the programs and in the policies that will come forth. And we will do our best. And our best means participating, my dear brothers and sisters. Some people are raising the question that I may not participate because I don't believe in either candidate or, or otherwise. Nonsense, my dear brothers and sisters. You have to participate. Use your intellect. Use your mind. Figure out which is which. Understand the principles of right and wrong and make the judgment for yourself. What is better and what is best. This contest on the soul of America is a very critical contest. And it requires every one of us to be in the forefront not only to vote for themselves and their family members, but also to make sure that their brothers and sisters, their neighbors, their, the people that must vote do, and they, they, they do vote on the issues they understand and the ways that they know are best for our nation. And so we are in a responsibility, we are in a testament to honor our legacy. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be the best, inshallah, offspring of Umar radiallahu an and of Khalid ibn al-Walid and Amr ibn al-As and all the decent men and our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I see and know that the actions of Umar were in congruence with the actions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, such as our actions, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and keep us steadfast, to forgive our sins, keep our feet steadfast and give us the best of this dunya and the akhirah. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Innahu ghafoor rahim. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih. Salatu wa salamu ala al-habib al-Mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa anwala. My dear respected brothers and sisters, the foundational principles for our understanding of engagement must stem from a deep set of beliefs and ideas. And the congruence we see with the principles of a nation we call our own here in America and our faith is something that is nothing short of a, a blessing, a guidance, a way for us to cultivate what moves us best and what makes us who we are and who defines what makes us who we are in a way that will enable us to discharge the most good, inshallah, in the service of our nation. And so let us get out there. Let us do our best, inshallah, to move things forward. Let's not be faced by scare tactics or pressures or 
That's just tests in this dunya. Our eye is in the hereafter, insha'Allah. But let us be aware of our own surroundings. Nobody understands America and nobody lives America. We're not expecting for anybody else to tell us, to, to tell us what's right and what's wrong. It's you and me and everybody else in this American society that defines what is good and what is not. When we talk about al-amru bil-ma'roof wa nahi an al-munkar, one of the definitions of al-ma'roof is that which is considered goodness amongst people. And munkar is that which is disdained and pushed by people. That's us, that's our children, that's generations of folks who are here who have to take charge of their own future and make sure that we are all, inshallah, in this ship moving forward in the best of conditions. Let us be inspired, inshallah, so that we can do the right thing, join the efforts that are out there to do, to get out to vote efforts, helping and supporting those who can drive people to the, vote, to the voting polls, take them. Those who are not going to be here during... The, Election day, go and do your early voting. Those who may be traveling, those who may not be able to put their vote, do not look at this as a simple little responsibility. It, it's what defines our willingness and readiness and our strength to participate, inshallah, in making sure that we are enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and keep us steadfast. Allahumma afu anna wa aghfir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها مولايا أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله راقم الصلاة